want to tell you about an existing uh, uh, experiment and uh, it was not created uh, to become a model for diaspora, but it is. And I hope you will find in it uh, a model to be replicated uh, in many uh, disciplines and in many countries. Okay. Uh, oops. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about the problem and the proposed solution and the results we get and what we are uh, dreaming to get in the future. And then I will show you a four minutes uh, video uh, which kind of illustrate the result of this experience. Uh, first of all, let me tell you about the problem. Uh, uh, in Sudan, uh, we have here it says 28 public universities. Now there are 32 public universities. And there are uh, 12 private universities. And about 100 now uh, small colleges. Now each of these colleges or universities, whether public or private, have one kind of uh, computer uh, subject being taught either computer science or information technology, software engineering, networking, and so on. And uh, it is a requirement by uh, the Ministry of Higher Education that each, each program must be led by at least one PhD holder, which is a modest uh, requirement. Therefore, we have a big, very big deficiency in uh, people with PhDs. Also given the brain drain in the Sudan, similar to many countries, whereby uh, anybody who has this uh, qualification migrates from Sudan. And the other alternative, uh, and also there are not many uh, people, many professors who can supervise a PhD in these disciplines. Uh, some people resort to going abroad uh, to do this. It is very expensive for Sudanese families to do this. Also, there are many Sudanese who are tied by social uh, uh, conditions or otherwise, like uh, uh, girls who are married or those who have children. It becomes very difficult for them. They hold master's degree, but uh, uh, they cannot continue in higher education without a PhD. So, uh, uh, the, uh, we, uh, we want affordable education and qualified supervisors to do this. Therefore, the objective of this program is to enable lecturers, that is people lecturing in, uh, in Sudan, is somebody who has a master's degree in the, in the subject, lecturers who hold master's degree to obtain PhD in computer science and information technology, in the country, and he should do current research problems, okay? He can come with me and do a PhD. I, alhamdulillah, 30 people have done it, but it's not granted that it's current research because you want somebody focusing on a certain area and working on it up to date, okay? And this is scarce uh, in our country, uh, under qualified supervisor and at an affordable cost. Uh, uh, so what we did is that we have a call for supervisors. We said, okay, the internet is covering the whole world. So why not make use of the resources, of the international resources? So we have the call for supervisors. So we brought supervisors from all over the world, as you will see in the statistics, from Australia, from uh, United States, Canada, UK, Germany, and so on. And uh, we are using a system called uh, WebEx, which is much better than uh, Skype. In other words, students can talk to each other. They can talk to their supervisors. They can chat. Everything is recorded and so on. You get picture, you get video, uh, you get uh, uh, audio and so on. And the examinations, every evaluation is conducted face to face. 
In other words, they have to come to Sudan for their examinations. We have to see the person, we examine him, okay? Uh, probably this is a bit conservative, but we want uh, to get credible results. And we make sure that uh, these people are the real people doing the thing. Oops, I am sorry, huh? So the students are from the country. When we started, we started with Sudanese and a few people from Nigeria, Chad, and so on. But alhamdulillah now, for example, this year, we have six lecturers from University of Gondar in Ethiopia. They are with us, okay? Now this program is six years old. We have taken back six. We did not talk about it before because we were worried that the experience or the trial or the experiment may be killed in its infancy. So we waited until we graduated. And now we graduated 20, already 20 PhDs. And at least six of them are working in Sudan. Okay? Uh, you know that Saudi Arabia has opened many girls colleges and therefore they recruited many of our masters uh, women are working in there but they are all threatened that if they do not get PhD they may not uh, continue in their job. Uh, okay. Uh, so the requirement to have a master degree it is competitive. We get like 120 applicants. We choose about 60 from inside and outside the Sudan. Uh, and as I said, they must come for their seminars in the university, the exams are in the university. We have, uh, this, the supervisor has to come at least once a year. He will have every presentation, will be attended by an external examiner from another Sudanese university, an, an internal examiner and the supervisor. So, the distribution of students uh, until 215, 216 is not included here. You see we have uh, 95, a total of 95 males and a total of 113 females. Uh, there are from Egypt uh, and uh, Nigeria and so on. These are not Sudanese, but the ones from Saudi Arabia are mainly, as you see, they are mainly 45 Sudanese girls from Saudi Arabia who are lecturers there. They are enrolling. This current batch six, we have 37 lecturers from uh, Sudanese universities, private and public, who are in the, in the program, and then the others are engineers or in, in companies and so on. <coughs> the professors, as I said, from uh, all over the world, and uh, uh, we are the only university in the world where the students sit like as you are sitting, and we parade the supervisors Every supervisor comes and introduces his area of research, and then the student will choose two for semester two, and then if he passes the two subjects with that supervisor, then he chooses one of them as a supervisor. We book a hotel, the students come, and the supervisors come, and uh, every day we introduce two supervisors, and the students sit with him, are you going to do this, and what is the use of this, and so on and so on with the 12 supervisors, and finally, uh, each student chooses two. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so this is the distribution of participating supervisors, as you see Australia, Canada. You see, most of these are diaspora, but they were not recruited, they did not join as diaspora, they joined as professors from this university, most of them, we prefer actually associate professors because they want to publish, they, uh, okay, they have more time for our student, they can bear the terrible English of our students and so on, <laughs> okay? Uh, so, as you see, we have from Sweden, from Tunis, Turkey, UK, you name it, okay? So, it is a tough job, you know? in the Sudan whereby if a foreigner buys a ticket, it must be paid in dollars and the agency wanted cash to get these people there. And particularly if you have a coup in Turkey, then most of your things, <laughs> you see, the coup in Turkey affected us much more, I think, than Turkey, you see. <laughs> uh, okay, 
uh, and, uh, and since we have many people from many, many professors from many universities, we have a spectrum of specializations covering the whole spectrum of uh, computer and information technology, from business modeling to soft computing to network security, natural language processing, Arabic processing, mobile networks, geoinformatics, uh, big data, and so on. Okay. Uh, and uh, naturally, the professors want publications, and therefore our students uh, publish and publish in international journals and so on. So we have, uh, this is up to 1914, 2014, uh, I mean 2014. Uh, now we have much more than this in 2015 and 2016, alhamdulillah. Okay. Problems. Uh, when we started, uh, like four years ago, uh, the, the lecturer in University of Zalingje in Darfur, he does not have to come to Khartoum. He is following. He comes only for presentations, for meeting his supervisor, and so on. But now he has to go to the university because it has a good internet. He cannot do it from home. It used to be that the woman does not have to dress and go. and She can do it at home. But now, unfortunately, in the rural areas, the internet is weak. Fortunately, the WebEx system, everything is recorded, so they have to get it by and so on. So that, that is a problem. Uh, the program was designed for three years. Now it typically takes four years because most of these people are working. And unfortunately, the Sudanese, when it comes to the research phase, they think that you register for a PhD and you wait and it will hatch a PhD in the end. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, now it doesn't work, you know. So, so, so they have to uh, do it, uh, I can say, to international standards, and therefore it takes, uh, 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 and, and because we are paying the professor, so we cannot bear that he stays. I have students, too, who stayed 13 years on their PhD. Fine, no problem, in, uh, when we are doing it by research. But this method, it doesn't work. We cannot bear that he uh, uh, works slowly. Limited number of scholarships. One year, we got some money from Ministry of Communications and from Faisal Islamic Bank, so we had 10 scholarships for the students. But we couldn't continue, only those 10. Okay, I, I hope one day, uh, 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 the way forward, we want money to uh, fund the, particip the participation of our students in international conferences. These are PhD students, and it is their right to go and present their research. Okay, now those sponsored by some agencies can do it, the others uh, cannot afford to do it. Okay, and uh, it is time now. We, we, are, we are now admitted by six. It is time to study the whole experience and find what is uh, our weakness and how can we improve on the performance? More involvement of the diaspora. In this program, we have only two Sudanese. One is a professor in the University of Florida, and uh, one in Malaysia. Okay, uh, so uh, we wish to have uh, more diaspora. But as I told you, if we look, for example, the, pe the person coming from Tunis is an American, but he's Tunisian. Egyptian, who is British. We have the dean of the University of Essex. He, 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 he has some of our students, but he's Egyptian originally. We have the one in uh, Australia. He's originally Ugandan, and, and so on. Uh, uh, this is not the end of our uh, aspirations. Uh, we want uh, to make uh, this program this department, a hub at least for East Africa. Because, alhamdulillah, now, since we have a relationship with the University of Gondar and they sent us six of their lecturers, okay, and now another university in Ethiopia called Bahr Dar or something, okay, they also came and said, this is good for us, we are going to bring five. So we want to keep these people, after they do their PhD something, to pin them in the Sudan, where they can publish more, and at the same time continue teaching 
uh, within the country. Uh, okay, I am going to show you a four minutes video, if you will bear with me. Uh, she is doing everything and her husband is, is asleep, huh? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, uh, this uh, you see here, we have uh, many uh, people in the diaspora, but they are coming for uh, 
to help their region actually, much more than just their country of origin. And also, uh, the professors are motivated in the sense that some of them are coming for venture, some are coming to get publications, uh, research, and so on. So, so there is an incentive 